Welcome to Psychic Holistic Spotlight. I'm your host, Josie Way, and co-hosting with me is Kathy Costa, and our guest is Linda Triconi. Um, you might know her from her shop in East Bridgewater. Uh, she does herbal things and Native American things, and I think you do healing as well. I am a healer, yes. That's Okay, did I leave anything out? Not really. It also, I also carry crystals, and um, I make a lot of different schematic tools. I also make pyramids for meditation in my store. Um, we have zero gravity chairs, and each person has a, uh, a pyramid um, that they can meditate with as we're doing the meditation. Um, it's, it's very... Um, metaphysical to a lot. We also do uh, readings and yeah. whatnot. Do you do classes? Well. Have a lot of classes. <coughs> uh, we do um, IET, which is healing with the um, angels. With the angels. Yes. Uh -huh. which, which hence is the name of my store, Angel Alley. Ah. So, so we do have a lot of uh, fun stuff going on there. And we, we pretty much have, uh, it's a happy-go-lucky um, group of girls that, uh, you know, that I work with. Um, we do the Reiki and a lot of teachings, a lot of teaching going on. I also teach how to make um, smudging feather fans. Um, mm -hmm. I also teach how to make, uh, with my friend, uh, we're called um, Earth Medicine Sisters. We teach how to make uh, dream catches, mm -hmm. uh, individual fans, single feather fans, a lot of different uh, tools, talking sticks, etc. And coop sticks, drums, and things like that. No, I um, I don't teach doing drums. It's a little too uh, too time consuming, and I really don't have the time to do that kind of thing. So, now, what's no. the talking sticks? Uh, talking sticks. Uh, it's Native American, of course, uh, and passed on to the um, uh, the Boy Scouts. It's you have the talking stick, and you ha you de it's decorated with flowers and it's decorated with feathers and streamers and a million other different earth elements that can be put on it. And you pass it from one person to the other, and that person is, has the ability to speak in the circle. Okay. And we, everybody else in the circle has to stop talking and ha has to actually listen to everything that person's saying so they're not interrupted. Oh, okay. Yeah. That makes it a little bit orderly, though, huh? In yes. the circle? Yes, it, yeah. does, it does create order. No, so you do, um, you offer a couple of different kinds of readings as well, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, we have the Oracle and um, Tarot. Um, we have the, angel, I get one gal does the angel readings. I myself am a soul, uh, I read shamanic cards. I'm a soul uh, reader. I, um, I pretty much go down to the very basic of, well, let me explain. A lot of people will call me because they're having difficulties in their life and they don't, they don't understand why they do the things that they do and why they repeat the same problems. And what I do is I go right down to the core of their soul and I bring up everything that's kind of like in their past and then we go forward and forward until we can figure out the reasons why they are having the difficulties that, they ha uh, difficulties that they're having. Okay. So that helps break the cycle for them, for that. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. What do you call that? Soul, soul reading. Soul reading. Yes. <clears throat> uh -huh. And after we find it, we do discuss it, and um, there is some cord cutting that does take place, and yeah. you know a few other things that uh, we go through. And of course, it's, there's a lot of smudging, and they're welcomed into the space. Uh, they're smudged first, and they're sitting, they're sat down. And when I do do the readings, I do have a large crystal, uh, double terminated that sits in front of me and um, they meditate on the crystals with, with both hands and to send their, transfer the energy toward me. Um, so it's, it's kind of complicated for a lot of people. I enjoy doing it. However, sometimes it gets overwhelming for me. Yeah. But yeah. If, if, if you're clairsentient, you, you would pick up a lot. Um, I'm a knower. Uh, oh, you're a knower? Yeah. yeah. I have um, a little of that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I and it's, I it comes it. with a shock at moments. Yeah. You know? yeah. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. So you have all kinds of customers that come into your store. 
looking I for different things. I have all kinds of customers yeah. that come in my store. Yeah, <laughs> so it's quite interesting <laughs> on a given day. It's a very interesting <laughs> thing, and they mostly come in for uh, if they have problems because I kind of have an open door for everybody that, and I'm very willing to share my knowledge with everybody too. So they all seem to come to me and they hear they network amongst themselves to know that what I know and what I don't know. I'm semi-retired and I have been for probably 30 years um, and I've had my store for around the same time so it's um, I'm quietly well known. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely known but yes I understand <laughs> that. Um, okay so so I guess now is a good time to say that like the name of the store and how people can get a hold of the store and make appointments. Um, yes, the name of my store is Angel Alley. It's in downtown East Bridgewater Center. It's located at 10 West Union Street. Um, is there a website? Uh, my website is in transition right now, but typically I do have one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. You bought some lovely things. I did. But this is yours. And, and this would be oh, yours. Oh my goodness. This Thank is you. one of the smaller feathers that I uh, create. Um, this one here is totally elemental. It has all your elements on it. It represents our... Is this turkey? This is a turkey feather. Yeah. It has, it has floral. These, the spirals that I use are shamanic as well as um, Celtic. And it represents uh -huh. the uh, spinning wheel of elemental, like wind. Oh, the medicine wheel? Fire. Yeah. Okay. No, no. Actually, it's a earth, wind, and fire. Okay. Yep. So it's along those lines. Oh, the okay. four yeah. elements. Yep. Okay. Yep. I also do healings myself at the store. I'm a shamanic healer. I started yes. healing when I was about 18 years old. I traveled across the uh, Massachusetts and down here in Rhode Island mostly with a healing um, priest that uh, was from Boston and at the time he wasn't allowed to practice in Boston his healing arts because he was a healer with his hands and um, I traveled with him down here mostly through uh, Rhode Island area in the hospitals and whatnot and he was fascinating. He would go into the uh, church it was just myself and one other person. Um, he would go into the church and he would talk to the doctor in the uh, waiting area and he would ask the doctor for the um, x-rays of the person that we were healing in the bed and doctors at that time were not too interested in him however he had the cutest little Irish brogue and he did convince them and, and nine times out of ten they would come back and they would be nice enough to give him you know the x-rays and at that time I experienced healing energy healing which was not at the time Reiki, it was uh, his heal hands-on healing, which is extremely similar to all the other modalities that I have learned uh, down the road. So we worked with the um, x-rays, and he would see where the tumor was or whatever, and he actually, after speaking to the doctor, he would actually tell them the flow of energy and what to concentrate on. Um, you know, as far as healing their own self. And in my schematic, fast forward, in my schematic practice, I do exactly the same thing because I teach people how to, I, let me just say that a lot of people just teach you, say, boom, you're healed, hallelujah. It's not the way it works. No. Uh, in practicing um, any kind of healing, you have to teach the person, the person in front of you how to heal themselves at the same time which isn't common in this uh, field. My whole thing is to take down, right down, strip them right down, show them exactly what they have to do themselves. At the same time, I'm doing the healing on them. So when they leave there, they have full knowledge of how to heal. Um, I also can heal pain. I've had two full knee replacements, and I've been questioned by doctors, several doctors, as far as why I never had any pain and I never had any medication, not even any kind of aspirin or anything else. I can heal my own pain. I can heal my own. Um, I can do a lot myself. Fascinating. Very, very fascinating. <laughs> it's fun. Yeah. It's fun. Um, how long have you been uh, been able to give the shamanic healing? 
Like as long as you've been uh, we're working with the shamanic healing about 35 years. Okay. Like the other, uh, which is pretty much it's it all goes hand in hand. It goes right back to, I know people say, witches. <laughs> you know, it's like they're bad. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? They were doing herbals. You know, you have the cottage witch and you have this witch and you have that witch. They did a lot of the same thing because it's all energy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all energy. It's all in how you use the energy. You're pushing the energy. You're calling down the white light for purification of the body. It's, you know, the luminous energy. It's, it's very, um, everything's all the same. It's all energy. Right down to the Vikings. I mean, it just falls right on up. Yeah. Okay, so we've been doing this a long time. Yeah, as yeah. long as the Vikings. Yeah, <laughs> at least as long as the Vikings. Yeah, at least as long. I, I, am, I am old. I am old. I admit it. <laughs> well, you weren't here on the Vikings, though. You're not that old. <laughs> no. That would no. be Saint Germain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. Oh yeah. All right, so, um, okay, so you're also a psychic medium, I'm told? I am, yes. Okay, so mm -hmm. you offer those readings as well, too? We do offer those readings at the store <laughs> as well. We also have Power of Three. Uh, and there are three of us at the store. There is uh, Amy Tripp, um, Jane Baker, and myself. We're, um, we have with Power of Three Master Healers, which means that we have multiple... Uh, master degrees in each each one of us, not just a one master degree in okay. multiple uh, forms of healing. Okay. And we offer that at the store, and um, everyone comes in. They sit in a zero gravity chair, and the three of us we do the sound healing and the um, hands on healing, the IET, a multiple, a whole a whole lot of different things for an hour and a half, and it's been very successful. We have a, we've had a lot of people that, you know, have been healed, actually, you know, with, with pain has been released. Uh, it, it, it's very successful. Okay. Huh. Interesting. Well, it would be. <coughs> In this world. Yeah. Yeah. Now, how does it work on emotional pain? Uh, it also works well with emotional pain as well as physical pain. Because your mind, if you're... Well, let me just say, when you, a lot of people, when they go places to meditate, they really don't know how to meditate, and they're really not taught how to meditate from the people who are in, standing in front of them. They just say, okay, let's meditate. But it's not, it's not that way. It's, you have to be completely relaxed and completely focused. It's like when they tell you to throw a piece of paper with a negative thing written on it and you're going to be healed and hallelujah. It doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, if you have a mantra, you can't use the mantra that you read in a book that tells you X, Y, and Z. You have to know that mantra and it has to be a part of you. You have mm -hmm. to feel it, eat it, you have to be it. And you have to repeat that to yourself. And it has to be short, sweet, and direct. Yeah. Unlike, you know, just being thrown out there. But yeah, the sound healing creates different vibrations in your body of different tones. And it helps you change your whole way of thinking for the time that you're there. And actually, it'll stay with you for uh, till the next morning a lot of times, till even a little bit longer. So it does get, away, get, get you away from your emotional stress and your feelings. Yeah, it's like one of those things that if you keep doing the thing that's causing you stress, you're just going to get more stressed. Absolutely. Yeah. You have to, it's all about breaking your pattern mm -hmm. and moving forward. Yeah. yeah. So that helps. you can only do so much as with the hum emotional healing. It does help. But if you keep doing those cycles, that, that's causing the pain, though. Absolutely. It's going to repeat yeah. itself no matter what, no yeah. matter what anybody tells you. Yeah. It's a, it's, it's so we got, that's where reality. we got to do our own healing as well, though, too. That's where that comes in. Yes. Yes, mm -hmm. that, that's, yeah. that's what I'm big on, teaching people how to control their own emotions, yeah. Yeah. control the, what their thoughts are, so mm -hmm. it's a, more on a positive up thing. You know, I always suggest singing in your car, you know, <laughs> just, let it, just let it go. When I actually did that earlier today. When you have no passengers. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 
yeah, don't let the don't let the cars next to you see you because hey, <laughs> they're gonna think you're the crazy person oh, driving. Oh, I know. Yeah, <laughs> yep. yep. <laughs> so we'll knock on your window and say, "Could I have your license?" You know? uh, really? Yeah. <laughs> you want or, to avoid that? Or yeah, you know, I, I like to bounce and stuff like that. <laughs> like, uh -huh. Do you want us to call? Funny 9 you should say that you? about bouncing. <laughs> you know, if you have got those stressful things, there are certain things that you can do with your hands. And with you pushing down and pushing to the side and to get your positive uh, motion going uh, you know, there are a million different things to take the stress off if you were in uh, if you were in Greece or Italy you'd be going like this you're taking your the negative energy off your body you can also use a feather to take yes. the negative energy off you can also use a copper pipe or you can use a selenite stick. Selenite stick is used uh, a lot in uh, different locations. It's like uh, burning sage. Burning sage, you know, comes from over in California area. But when you go up to Canada, it all changes. And when you come to New England, that changes. Um, you know, it, there are different herbs that we use, you mm -hmm. know, like for a lot of different things. Uh, for instance, you use um, cedar mm -hmm. you know, or those kind of tools for smudging. Um, actually you have in your package that I gave you oh. a smudging stick. Oh, thank you. Uh, when you do use the uh, smudging stick, there's also directions in there. But if you had a selenite wand, you would use a selenite wand the same way as you would use a spiritual feather. You would go up and down your body mm -hmm. and in front and over your head. If you were smudging and you were cleaning your own energy, you would take the smoke from the um, from the smudge in front of you, um, you would bring it up to your mm -hmm. face, over your head, into your heart. You can also do that with your smudging pot in front of you and scoop it up and bring it to your mm -hmm. heart and over your head to your third eye. Mm -hmm. So you get the same uh, kind of you know, healing and whatnot. Yeah, I didn't grow up in a household where they did any of these ceremonies. Uh -huh. But whenever the candles were lit for the um, for, for, the for the Sabbath day. Yeah. My stepmother would go like this. She would bring, so she was carrying on a tradition of some sort, but she would bring the light. Right. Well, the thing is and with a candle. I don't think she was bringing it into her heart. She didn't heart. know. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is with a candle, a lot of times when you suggest that you put uh, a mirror underneath it because uh, the mirror helps illuminate the space much more right. than just the candle. But the candle is seen from other dimensions. So if you call in spirit, if you're, um, you know, if you're actually, if I'm doing a reading sometimes, I'll, if I'm having a little bit of difficulty in calling spirit to come to me, I will light the candle at the same time because uh -huh. they will just flock to you. They just, they see it and they come. Yeah, well they actually, I made candles for a while. They love to play with candles. Oh, absolutely. They, and they, yep. they love to, what they do is, if it's a dripping kind of candle, mm -hmm. they'll make designs in the drips. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. I also have a class on um, opening the third eye, of which I have a tabletop um, fireplace kind of thing where the, the flames fly about this high. And um, actually, if we concentrate, we can make the flames jump to the left or to the right uh -huh. or, or higher. To, so it's just, it's collective. It's all collective energy. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's, um, I think that's called pyometry with the candles, with the candle burning go, going in different directions. What would you say? Pyo you say? Py pyrometry? I believe I, mean, I don't is. think yes. I'm seeing it yeah. right, though, yeah, but. No. Yep. Yeah, same the, the, the trick, check back, yeah, or whatever it is. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the big formal names for it, yeah. Yep. So people can get, um, like, can go to the store seven days a week, though, for the readings and, and the stuff that you have at the store? Um, not seven days a week okay. because, as I say, I am okay. semi-retired. Um, but yeah, usually Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, okay. Saturday, and Sunday. Okay. And Saturdays is all day readings with um, I have a couple of different readers too okay. as well. Okay, so that's a part of the day. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, do you still read too? Those are mostly the other people that work for you. I still, I, st I still read. Um, Sometimes I'm not, when I feel their energy when they come in, I will not read because um, yeah. I, um, I can't take on a whole lot. Meanwhile, they come back and I end up doing it. 
but <laughs> but yeah. you know it's I, I try I, I I pretty much pick and choose okay yeah. Yeah, depending on whether or not the energy drives with you yeah <laughs> you probably know that <laughs> yeah know that well I've been a reader myself though too yeah. like that's yeah. what I'm saying yeah yes. <laughs> yeah yeah, I, I know. Have. I know a couple of the readers that do the same thing, though, too, depending on the energy of the person coming in. Yeah, if they somebody's really down that low, I, uh, I pretty much step aside because I don't want to. Uh, if I dig up something that's really inside of them, it, it takes, uh, you know, it, rather than a forty-five minute reading, I can't let them go because I can't let them go in that state. Right. So it's. Uh, I spend a lot of time, um, you know, repairing. Yeah. And counseling. Yeah. yeah, sometimes they don't. They, yeah, they don't tell you that when you're reading, that yeah. you're counseling. <laughs> yeah, I I have a degree in counseling, but I, I've never used it as much as when I, I'm I'm helping someone in oh. with the. Oh, it's readers. true. It's true. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. true. Yeah. All right. So, um, so how long have you been making these these smudging feathers? Oh, I want to say about five years. Oh, okay, so that's not as long. Yeah. yeah, no, no. I I've been making metaphysical tools because I I had I started receiving um, downloads, probably. Spirit downloads. Spirit. I'm sorry. Spirit downloads. <laughs> probably about uh, almost twenty twenty five years ago. No. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I would get I would get spiritual downloads, and it would be I would be making tools. Um, mostly all out of copper, and I've actually incorporated in most of my smudge fans copper uh, with an elemental uh, in going, uh, rotation going in the uh, clockwise motion. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I totally lost where I was going. Okay, so what's the different kind of tools though that you get guided to make? Oh, yes, of course. So I make um, a lot of different healing tools. One of them that I make is... Um, is a pyramid, a small pyramid like this, and it has the elementals on it, and it's held up to the third eye. Um, you know, I make the, the smaller one that goes over the head. Um, I make a lot of different kinds of um, tools. I also make a plate that uh, has crystals on it. That's, the crystals are attached to one another by a, uh, by a copper wire, and it goes into the center of it. Um, if you hold your hands over them, you can feel the energy. And once this, even from a distance, with the um, the crystals in the um, different um, Chakras. copper oh. you know, copper that I have going up, going on in uh, the pyramid shape, they also you get the electrical charge from it. You can feel the energy that just comes out of it. Now, is it just for the third eye and the, and the crown chakras, or are they all used for the the different ones? For the things, the tools that I make, oh, I have different ones for the different uh, chakras. Okay. But moreover, there is one particular one that has a higher energy charge in it than the rest of them do. So a lot of times when I'm healing, I just go to that one. Okay. I also have a, um, a laser tool that has uh, a crystal attached to the top of it that I use um, for healing as well. Okay, is there a reason why one of the tools is stronger than the others? I think it's because I have the way I've done the wiring to it. I have it's a regular copper like that, and it has the the wire that goes all the way around the outside of the tube, and all the way around the bottom of it. And then inside it has the uh, the positive uh, run. Okay. So I think it's I think that's the reason. So, the so I have copper. reproduced that one, and it seems to be the stronger of them all. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. So how long are you, like when you're doing a healing session, how long are those versus like the readings? They're both about the same amount of time? My, well, everything seems to run anywhere from, uh, my readings run longer. Okay. Because I don't have the same time limits. You know, I'm not watching the dollars and cents okay. <laughs> of it, so to speak. So I, yeah, I can go as much as an hour and a half to two hours, but they're being charged for the, you know, the hour or the 45 minutes. Okay. Um, most of, typically I have uh, the, uh, the, uh, the readers in my um, store, they're 50 minutes to uh, 45 minutes. Okay. So, and that's where their comfort range is. You really, if you go, if you, if you go for the 15 minute or the 20 minute, 
you need to really go for the 30 minute because yeah. you, 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 you're surprised about how it goes. <laughs> yeah, sometimes the 15, 20 minutes isn't yeah. always enough, yeah. Actually, we have coming up at the store a new event. It's called uh, Power Shuffle. Uh, we're limiting, it, we're limiting the, the circle to be of at least uh, 10 people. And what we're going to do, there's three of us, the, the three master healers. And we're going to be going from person to person to person, going around in the circle. And each person will get um, three full readings by the time we're done. Okay. It's going to be an hour and a half. It's, it's going to be quite interesting. And it's, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, not a terribly expensive uh, thing for people to do. Do you have do. dates for that yet, or is that coming? That's coming up in a couple of weeks. Okay. I do have a date, okay. but I don't have it on me. Okay, well, yeah, so by the time this gets recorded, the cost would have already been passed. Yes, okay. but, you know, yeah. if it's successful, you'll do it again. Oh, yes, we'll be doing it monthly. Go, yeah. Like the power of three. We, and actually, it's the power of three that it's, that's going to be doing the, uh, the reading. It's, some, readings, it's yeah. something new and exciting. You know, I like to keep things, uh, shake things up a little bit. Yeah, keep yeah, things fresh, to. yeah. <laughs> now, the name of your store is Angel Alley, right? Angel Alley. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the reason it has the name of Angel Alley is because it's located kind of in the center of the Bridgewater Triangle. Actually, the Bridgewater Triangle, a lot of it was uh, filmed in the back room of my store. Uh, and my son opens up. Um, He's a, a historian on the whole uh, Bridgewater Triangle. And uh, so when it was, um, so when I first bought the building, it was weird because they were orbs going from my window in the basement into the other uh, basement of the building next to me. So you, you could actually visually see the orbs. And of course, orbs, there still is no real scientific Explanation, explanation for, it. for it. But at the time, I was like fascinated. Of yeah. Course. It's like so, hence the name Angel Alley. Because <laughs> I was hopeful <laughs> it was angels. Oh, well, you know, the angels are always with us, so as you know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, they're always with us. Yes. And shortly after that, I, I, uh, my, um, my building um, has been blessed in all four corners. Uh, my events that we have, we pretty much open up in all four directions. Mm. Um, I, it's, it's, it's a very clean space. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I imagine you regularly, you know, smudge and do I things. do, I do. Also, I'm a reverend. I am a reverend of um, Our Lady of All Nations, uh -huh. uh, which is acceptance of all. Tom all Frederick. Frederick. Yeah, Tom, yes, Tom's a very good friend of mine. Yeah. Yep, I was. I've been with Tom for about um, about thirty years. Yeah, he he married my husband and I. Oh, did he? How yeah. nice. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Old home week. You never can tell who you're going <laughs> to run into. <laughs> How true that is. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So you know, we can always go to your store though, to buy any of these tools though, and to get a reading from you or from one of the other practitioners. Absolutely. At, at your place though. Mm -hmm. um, so. Of course, without disclosing too much, though, because there was some privacy in the readings, what has been the most interesting part of a reading for you? The most interesting part? Mm -hmm. It can be bad or good, either one. The, well, yeah. actually, as a whole, because I don't discuss any of that, mm -hmm. uh, the most surprising thing for me is the fact that I can, uh, before the person comes into the store, I will have a piece of paper next to me and whatnot, and I will be able to write down one to three different names that's going that relates to them. So that's really oh, before they even get into the before store, they yeah. even come into the store. Oh. So that fascinates me. Yeah, that is quite interesting. That's yeah. a little like Roland's pa purple papers. Yeah, yeah. purple he, papers. Yeah, <laughs> that he writes stuff down, yeah. Yeah. and he and then when he meets the people that it belongs to. I suppose it's very similar, yes. Yeah. yeah. It's a similar idea. Yeah. <laughs> it's spirit working yeah. in all its ways. We did our practice circle of the um, power shuffle, and we had six people, no, seven people, I think. And I, the, of the people, and it was fast clipping too. I was shocked and stunned, and we all were that we were able to do it. Mm -hmm. And I had come up with three names for three different people. Yeah. So, you know, it, I amaze myself sometimes, and it's like, I'm shocked and stunned. Is it always deceased people, or is it still pe like some no, people still? No, I, go, I like go, go. No, I'm. Um, yeah, no, not just deceased. I get people. And people present. still in the physical yeah. as well. Yep. Yep. Yes. Okay. Yep.